a befitting song to kick off the show today as the owner of our radio station is getting married right now. The ceremony <laughs> is starting and I just want to send a shout out to him and his lovely wife-to-be, Jeff and Kim, uh, wishing you guys the best luck with marriage and life to come and all great wishes and all of that good stuff, you know, just all of that good stuff. But hey, out there in digital radio world, I am Xavier Fox, the first lady of talk on the Astute Gentleman Radio Network. Welcome to my show, Let's Talk About It. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to talk about relationships. We're sharing information on health and fitness, getting our money right with investing info. And yes, we will talk about sex. And you never know what controversial, intriguing, intense conversations might take place on this show or who might be the next special guest. I'm here on Monday mornings from 7 to 9 a.m. and on Thursdays and Fridays from 12 to 2. Tune in for the journey and be ready to laugh and open to learn as we explore different viewpoints. Today, we are kicking off opening to love with our guest host, Miss Rita Musham Suit Stewart. And I think I said, Hey, hey, hey. All you, right. you, look at you. You've been practicing. <laughs> hey. been practicing. So, <laughs> plan to heal is the topic of her segment, and many of us need to do just that. Then, our DMV correspondent, Nicole Williams, takes over for our What's Hot segment, and she's talking celebrity gossip, uh, upcoming events, movies to Netflix and chill with, a little girl talk, and much more. If you want to participate on the show today, feel free to zoom in using the link which you can find on my Facebook page, Xavier Fox, or join the public Facebook group, Let's Talk About It with Xavier Fox, where you can get all the show info and interact with the personalities on the show. But let's get to it. How you doing today, Miss Rita? I am doing amazingly well, thank you. Oh, How are you? <laughs> I am doing great. You know, just a whole lot of stuff going on, you know, mm. moving and rehabbing and this and that and the other. But I yeah. love every moment of it and all the opportunities that seem to be presenting themselves. Mm -hmm. I love those new beginnings. You know, moving around is so good for the soul. Yes, it is good for the soul. I like the new beginners too. Mm -hmm. I like the new beginners too. So we gonna plan to heal? Yes, you know, um, I wanted to really correlate uh, what it means to open to love, you know, about healing, right? Because most of us are really looking for someone to love. But what we don't realize is that we're kind of opposed to love because our hearts are still closed. Mm -hmm. You know, I saw a quote the other day that said, in order to receive, your heart must be free. And love really is about receiving. You have to be open to receive love and not just be someone that takes, you know, from somebody else. Show me that you love me. Prove that you love me. Act like you love me. All of those are forms of taking instead of being loving. Does that make sense? Yep. So to start this off, I'd like to read a poem because it actually does, uh, first of all, April is National Poetry Month. Okay. And, you know, in my spare time, I am a poet. I have published a poetry book. But this particular poem I wrote about 10 or 15 years ago. Okay. And it's called Be Free. She was a child, my mother was, when her father made his choice taking her virginity, assuring her insanity, and robbing her of me. Some say I could be his child. My birthplace says unknown. For days and months, I searched for love while my mother suffered alone. Her mind collapsed at the age of 27. I only five and my sister seven. I prayed. I cried, my insides, they died. And my father was no father I ever knew. In a home she lives now, me afraid to visit. It hurts so much to miss her touch and to remember living without her. I still search for love, 
but it's futile and bare. I feel I have no heart left to share. There is no blame. I understand my mother's shame and my unlove cannot heal her. What could a father be to love his child other than to rape her room? Mercy and grace has its place. Forgiveness has to be real. Mommy remembers only the pain. The wounds are deeper than eyes can see. One day I pray, he'll remember who she is. And then we shall all be free. That's the end of that piece. Wow. That was what they got to get a snap. That, that was really deep. You know, and, and it gets deeper, right? Now I want to, you know, my mother passed away in 19, uh, no, in 2005 at the age of 65. She never did recover um, her life uh, fully. And it was because the people around her also did not know how to deal with what was happening. You know, all of the hush hush, all of the be quiet and, you know, the same thing we doing now about pedophilia and, and incest. So of course, um, it falls, you would, does it say the sins of the father, mm -hmm. you know, falls on the children, mm -hmm. you know? So last year, last year, I actually had three falls, three falls on concrete mm. in a one month period of time. Good Lord. What's beautiful about that is that I did not break anything, you know, and I'm over 60, right? So it's like the last thing anybody want to do over 60 is fall because you hear the horror stories. Right? Man, over 50, what you talking about? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I was like, what the universe, you know, and you know, Timothy, Timothy, he's my astrologer, Timothy Glenn, mm -hmm. and, and he's like, Moot, you know, you were born doing a, a Mercury retrograde and a Uranus retrograde, so you got to be careful about falling. I was like, do you know that I fell three times? <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. And I, listen, because he's like, don't you ever run for a bus? Don't you ever be? And I wasn't. I was literally walking down the street. <laughs> you was just walking and fell. <laughs> yeah. So that led to um, me actually having to go deep within myself. I had to literally de uh, develop a plan to heal. Because again, when you get to a certain age, people start wanting you to get Medicaid, uh, seek medical attention, uh, get a cane, get a walker, get a hip transplant, you know, and it's like, uh, no, thank you. Right. <laughs> you know, there is a message that my spirit wants me to get. So you know what I did? I broke it down into the work that we do with Masterforce, the life quadrant. Okay. I said, what are the mental issues going on that affecting my thigh, my hip? What are the emotional, the physical, and the spiritual aspects here that I'm missing? What am I not willing to hear that the universe has to cause pain? Wow. You see that? And, and listen, as a, as a Capricorn being ruled by Saturn, my lessons come hard like that. Yeah. My yep. lessons have come hard. But the thing is, I have earned everything that I have gotten in life. And I've had a very blessed life indeed, right? Considering the pain. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway... Of course, I have, you know, uh, my own mentors who, who are very helpful. You know, I have a, a mentor that happens to be a doctor, a healer, uh, a chiropractor who worked on me and, and helped me to redevelop uh, the strength that I needed and, and, and looked at what the supplements were. But the work that I saw is that Really, when we start looking at our life through the spiritual essence of who we are, 
we can see more deeply the purpose of everything. Okay. You know, for instance, you've heard me mention about uh, Saturn returns. Mm -hmm. So Saturn returns, uh, the first Saturn return usually happened between the age of 28 and 30, right? So we've lived, and by the time we get to 28, we've, we've been born, we've been an infant, we've been a toddler, we've been a child, we've been an adolescent, we've been a teenager, we've been a young adult. And by the time you get to 28, this universe say, okay, well, who are you in spirit? Have you even tapped into your spirit? Now, because the educational system disrupts our spiritual development, a lot of times when people get to 28, they have what is called a dark night of the soul because life is not what they expect it to be. Mm. You know, they thought that, you know, if they got an education and, and got married and have kids, they should be happy ever after. Well, nope, it doesn't look like that. Or they thought, you know, if I actually do this, this and this, I can be famous and rich and then I'll be happy. Nope, mm -hmm. it doesn't work like that. So they begin to doubt themselves when actually the universe is saying, go deeper into yourself. Go deeper, look for your purpose, look for who you are. What is the essence of your being? Why were you born? Why did you ask to come here? You see, and most of us act like, oh, I didn't want to be born. My parents, oh no, baby. <laughs> oh, we are on a spiritual journey and literally everybody here asked to be here. Now, until you take responsibility for that, your life is going to be haphazard. But if you take responsibility for that, you have a full deck blueprint in your soul that will lay out every step you can take and give you choices in that. You, it's not like you do exactly what's said. No, it's like, here are the choices. Do this and this and this. And whatever you do, those are going to be your experiences. Mm -hmm. So that first Saturn return, 28 and 30, you have your next one between 58 and 60. Oh. Now you've actually did a little bit of living, you've gotten married, your kids are grown, you've, you know, and that what people don't realize is that the most productive years are between the ages of 60 and 80. You know, I've read that somewhere and that just seems <laughs> so far-fetched, but you have, we look at life in such short terms that we we think that that's the end when actually you've just now gotten all of the experiences needed for you to know how to make um, a real decisions. You've not only gotten the experience, you've probably been able to accumulate some money. Right. You probably don't have children that you have to pay for their education and their food and their clothes. You know, so you, you're a little bit, you have a little bit more free time. Mm -hmm. You have free time, you have free money, you have a free brain that can focus on something else. Now, the challenge is most of us have been focused on someone else for so long and something yep. else. We don't know how to focus on ourselves. Yeah, don't even know who you are. Don't even know who you are. Yep. So, when, so many people start allowing themselves to dwindle. You know what I'm saying? And don't let retirement come in. Because now, oops, sorry about that. Because now retirement becomes, oh, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. and nothing nothing I, i'm not useful i I'm, I'm nobody i don't have anything to offer and none of that is true right, right. because right. between the age of 58 and 60 you get the opportunity to recalibrate all of your experiences you get to say what over here has made a difference what have i learned that i can now teach share and provide for someone else. Mm. What can I grow and build that I wasn't able to do before because I didn't have the resources at the time? You see that? Mm -hmm. So you get to actually create a new life because your next, your next Saturn return comes between the ages of 81 and 83. Ooh, yeah, and they, they predict that most people won't make it that far. Most people won't make it that far, but guess what? 
we have the capacity right now, if we ate right and exercise yep. on this planet to be, to live to be 150, so that mid age is considered 75 right now. There you go. I right agree. now. Yep. But literally, we have the capacity to live beyond that if we took the spiritual up step. But that's a different conversation. <laughs> I'm just talking about <laughs> So let me let me get you to do something real quick because you know a lot of the listeners probably have no idea what a Saturn return is. Can you just give a little information on that back that? Yes. So the Saturn Saturn is the planet that I believe is one of the bigger planets, but it's the 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 planet that actually holds in place time in. Um, time and function and it rules literally it's called the father sign right it's the father it actually makes sure that you're gonna do what you're supposed to do it's a disciplinarian it's considered to be pretty hard a pretty hard aspect but it really is the the planet that gives us the energy to fulfill on our mission Mm. So the universe is kind enough to, I mean, every, you know, all of us have Saturn someplace in our planet, right? Mm -hmm. But the universe is kind enough to emphasize that energy at those ages to give us the opportunity to grow spiritually. Because again, this world will teach us that we are not spiritual beings, Right. We have we have been taught go get the money, go get the sex, you know, go get the adventure, <laughs> you know, you know, and you can have all of that. But literally, your essence, your soul essence, came here to learn, to grow, to expand into universal consciousness. You can decide to come back and do it again, or you can say, "Let me go on and have another experience." But Saturn is the planet that, that helps us to stay grounded. That's why you find Capricorns. So Saturn rules both Capricorn and Aquarius, right? But I think Aquarius is also ruled by Uranus too. But Capricorn, that, you know, most of the time they're pretty grounded. They're considered the earth sign. You know, they're um, kind of matter of fact about stuff, you know, mm -hmm. comes, uh, you know, that kind of thing. But that's a solid, you consider that Capricorns are pretty solid. You know, a lot of people don't like Capricorns because uh, they're going to tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. I got a right. grandson that's a Capricorn. I guess he going to be. Um... Yeah, baby. He going to be. <laughs> your daughter, your daughter's going to be like, Ma. <laughs> yeah. Yep, and she's a Libra, so I don't know how they're going to work together. Oh, yes, indeed, depending on where her moon and her ascending is. So when, when I began working on this hip uh, recovery, I had to, first of all, realize that this location is in my left hood hip, right? Okay. And you know how we use Louise Hay. Whenever you do something, cut your finger, whatever, you look, what's the, what's the ligament? What side of the body it's on? Okay. Because if it's on the right side of the body, that's masculine energy. If it's on the right side, on the left side of the body, that's feminine energy. Okay. So if I have something happening, you know, say for instance, to my foot, on my toe and it's on the right side of the body, that means that I'm putting out too much energy. Okay. I'm in balance because I'm putting out too much energy. That's the masculine. That's the masculine. Okay. Masculine is outward, feminine is inward. So if I have an issue on the left side of my body, that means there's an internal internal imbalance mm -hmm. that I need to look at. Mm -hmm. So you know me, you know, I'm like, well, okay, well, I guess I gotta <laughs> get a little bit deep in this meditation and this breathing apparatus because uh, this 
this uh, hip seriously hurts, you know, and I actually went through a three month inability to walk. Ooh, three months. Oh my goodness. Three months. And matter of fact, my, my uh, chiropractor was like, yeah, you, you can't even go outside. You Ooh. can't. Matter of fact, I don't want you to have any company. Matter of fact, I don't want you to even talk to people moot because you have to go so deep inside yourself because you have been a giver and you give out too much. Mm. Yep, that's exactly what I said, Xavier. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, no company. No calls, no outside. I can do that. I, I, I can be a good hermit. Okay. That's that's easy for me. I can easily, you know. I could do it for a week. That's it. Oh, no, no, no. I could do it. And I've had to have readings that say, stop. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, girl, please. I can crochet, write, write poetry, write songs, get on my garage band, write books cook i mean i just i love the time that i spend with myself you know so that wasn't the challenge for me the challenge for me was really trying to get to the root of the pain because i'm a quick healer and it did not make sense to me that this didn't heal because i willed it to mm -hmm. you understand i was I'm willing you to heal. And my spirit is like, yeah, well, it don't work like that now. <laughs> we, we ain't using your will for this, okay? <laughs> so now I said, okay, left side of the body, here. Let me go deeper. Let me look at the metaphysical side of this. So the first work that I did I, I'm thinking, okay, this is my root because I fell, you know, I fell legs. This is my root chakra being affected. Okay. So let me do a full week of just doing, uh, cleansing my root chakra, activate my root chakra, energizing my root chakra. I put red all through my house. I, you know, I, I wore red, you know, I ate red fruit foods and vegetables and fruit. You know what I'm saying? We go and it did my root chakra affirmations, you know. Some of the pain eased, but it didn't go away. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm still looking, saying, what is going on? So then I go and study some more. And then I start realizing that for the last, what, three years, most of us have been sitting, right? Mm -hmm. sitting because you know we've been locked in with this pandemic right mm -hmm. yep the pandemic i like the pandemic right mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. we've been sitting and a lot of people that get hip problems are on, on the left side are women between the ages of 40 and 60 hmm. hips mean a fear of moving forward in life. Oh no. Being stuck or feeling stuck or thinking you're stuck. You see that? Wow, okay. And you know me, I'm the 10,000 steps a day woman. Right. And but I all last year I had to sit my ass down. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. Right? So I knew it was something a little bit deeper because I'm not a sitter. Mm -hmm. But in this case, I had to sit. Mm -hmm. So I started going a little bit deeper. The hip holds most, like 90%, maybe even 99% of your emotional trauma, especially as it relates to your mother. Ooh. Or... It doesn't have to be mother itself, but the aspects of mother that you may have been denied in your childhood. Now, you know, I was boohooing my ass. You know, like, oh, come on. <laughs> right. Absolutely. Come on. 
got to go back and revisit all that neglect. Mm. All of that ignoring. All the, and it wasn't like, it wasn't that it was my mother's fault. It was the environment that I was in. They didn't know how to provide for me. But I still stored that energy in my hips. And I had to go, and that's why I read that poem. Because the, the experience of not having my mother, as much as I can forgive all of that, it happened. Mm -hmm. It happened. And I did live without a mother and father. I did live without significant attention from anybody growing up which is why, you know, I am comfortable being by myself. But still, as a child, it makes a difference to have somebody viewing you as you grow up. Mm -hmm. You know, even, even, even if they call it what they call negative attention, it's still attention. Right. But to get no attention is a whole different realm. So now I was just like, oh, my goodness, sorry, let me... Let me breathe and journal this. Let me get what I'm feeling. Let me go all the way. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and it was so funny, Xavier, because uh, when I was doing this work and my daughter happened to text me and says, how many, how often do you cry? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you mean like right now or <laughs> prior to today? <laughs> And I said, I text her back at least once a week, you know, and I didn't tell her until, you know, a few weeks later what, what was going on about that. But I just thought, and I told her, I said, that just shows how connected we are. Even you didn't know that I was going through that at that moment. Mm -hmm. But the fact that you would bring that into the space. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Some people just be reading you. It's kind of like uh, your, the, the whole show today that you're talking about. I just had a very similar conversation this morning on the way to where I am. So this is just really resonating. I'm like, okay, here we go. You always do that to me though. So okay, you know, we always go. And I said that too. I was like, dang, you know, I just realized that's probably why Xavier and I connect at that level. Cause I thought the level we connected at was being widows at an early age, right? Yep, we got that too. We got that too. Mm -hmm. But this, this mother thing, cause you know, I don't think, first of all, I didn't have no mother issues if you ask me. I knew I had some. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't. You couldn't have told me I had mother issues, right? But baby, <laughs> when I started looking, I promise you every guy that I've had a close relationship to had mother issues. Ooh. So the universe been trying to talk to me, mm. been trying to tell me to get this work. Wow. But because I am an accomplished person, because I can get shit done, you know, it's like you feel like, oh, I'm doing something because I can make a difference in the world. Well, yep. you can make a difference for yourself. And that's, that's what you get to see at that 60 variation, right? You get to see with all the things you do for everybody else doesn't matter if you're not really firmly rooted in your own body because this body, this only vehicle that you have has to take you for at least another hundred years. Now, there you go. See, because I got stuff to do and I have grandchildren, I got great grandchildren, you know, I got some other children, right? <laughs> Yep. <laughs> and I'm, I'm clear of what my mission is. So now you go deeper into the messages from the metaphysical side. And one of the, the biggest one, going through life too fast. Mm. And I was saying, now I saw this after I didn't set for a year. Like, why in the hell am I, <laughs> you know, like, because we go through life on such a superficial level. Mm -hmm. 
oh, let's go to this event. Let's do this. But many of us don't take time to be present to where we are, right? And then after that, it's like, what was that experience for? What was that person for? Why did I meet that person? What was the message they were delivering to me? What did I grow in through that event? You see? Mm -hmm. And so we have to slow it down. So I I guess I'm realizing my daughter is kind of my therapist because when I shared that with her, she said to me, mommy, I keep telling you to sit down. I keep telling you, you've been like that all your life. (laughs) And when she was telling me that, I said, I am sitting down. She said, (laughs) but I bet you're not being still. I said, well, what? I said, I'm crocheting. See, I told you, you don't know how to stand. Oh, well, then I don't know how to do that either. Because if <laughs> I'm sitting down, I'm still doing something. I told her, I said, okay, now I guess I got to go into my monk mode. Oh, my goodness. Okay, what does a monk mode look like for me? What does that hermit really look like? You know, so it's like shutting out everything for a couple of hours every day. You know, like, you know. Sitting in the bathtub. For a couple I like hours. to do that. I like that part. Yes, yeah, silence. You know, it used to be a time when I could do three or four days of silence. You know, when's the last time you did that? You know. Hmm. So maybe the question is, when's the first time you did that? Listen, I was thinking about that the other day. I said I need to design a retreat where we at least do a 24 hour so that people can get, I I do, I do recommend to some of my clients who are very busy to do at least a 24 hour silence and solitude because our lives are so busy. 24 hours is a lot to do already. You know, I have a a brief story. Uh, I think I missed you, but you know, I've been doing getaways with some of my girls. Yes, yes. We went up to Sundara Spa beautiful right. wonderful space they have everything you want to relax up there and yes. clean, massage everything what they ask is in common areas that you do not bring your cell phone because you're supposed to detach from all of that this is your time to relax we all had our cell phones stuck in our pocket we, we couldn't do it we were still taking pictures posting on social media nobody did we were only we were there from friday till sunday and nobody ever went without their cell phone a whole day. Yep. We, we didn't go yep. anywhere without it. Yep. Yeah. And, and you, you saying know, that just brought that to light for me. Like, wow, we couldn't even detach just. We couldn't even just for that period of time. It's in my pocket. I might have it on vibrate. Right. <laughs> but it wasn't even about being silent. We didn't, it wasn't, it just don't. It was the cell phone. Don't yeah. have your, you can still talk to your friends. That's right mm-hmm. there with you. Be yeah. in the moment and present. And we didn't do that. Right. Hmm. Yeah. So that, that part, that part of going into solitude and seeing what is my inner child? Like, what does it look like to really nurture and vibe and take care of whatever that inner child has been missing? What, what does that look like for me? You know, and getting acquainted, like, you know, I've just been grown ass since I was five. Wow. I mean, like literally, I had to wash my own underwear and shit at five years old. If I didn't wash my underwear, I wore stinky ass underwear to school the next day and nobody checked. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So I had to really get down to the, the heartbreaking crux of that child. And, you know, really let, you know, be bare boned about it. But at the same time, let her know that I was safe, you know, because also your hips is the place where your safety lie. Hmm. And here's the other thing I've all that, all that root chakra work I was doing. the, The hips are governed by the sacral chakra. Hmm. Your area of creativity, really? the essence of your being that creates the egg sac, all of that is sacral. That's the sacral chakra. And it's about putting your gifts into the world unapologetically. Hmm. 
So I was like, oh, what? Sacral shot? Okay, well, let me get this binaural beat going for sacral. You know, now I had to go through a whole nother cleanse, but I, you know, I probably needed to cleanse the root chakra to make sure the sacral chakra was going to hold up, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, when I tell you that going through the mental, emotional, physical, spiritual side of this healing, my whole diet changed. I, I literally, I, I, you know, I was not even trying to eat food. My whole diet was about the nutrition mm -hmm. because you, after, after 60, you know, you, and people know, I knew my, I, I, I felt the change in my body after 30. I felt it after 40. After 50, you know, because I had addressed so many issues at 40, I didn't have any issues. I didn't have any, you know what I mean? I was mm -hmm. pretty solid. Mm -hmm. After 60, baby, my body said, mm, okay, we're going to stop this. and Because uh, all of your systems began to go the other way. Hmm. And if you keep doing the same thing that you were doing before, so people that have a bad diet, people that drink all the time, people that smoke, people who watch TV or have the television on while they sleep, people that all of those negative inputs that you have, if you don't adjust those, you're literally siphoning off your life after 60. Oh, man. Right. Because you have a choice. You can either continue that and, and, and knock off your life cycle, or you can regenerate. And what does it mean to, in, to regenerate? It means to add more nutrition. Mm -hmm. It's all about nutrition. So I had to up the calcium, up the omega-3s, up the D3s with the K1s, up the vitamin B1, 3, 6s. Up, I had to study the whole nutrition thing all over again because the body acts differently after 60. Hmm. Right. That's what I said. <laughs> I think I'm rather healthy and I do pay attention to nutrition, but not the way you're saying it. Cause I get the energy that you're saying in a different, you were eating for the nutrition, not because you were hungry and not for the taste you were eating exactly. for the nutrition of it. Exactly. And, and, you know, anybody that knows me because I broke my hip, thigh and knee when, when I was 17, I, I really did get on a healing regimen. I mean, I became vegetarian. Uh, you know, there were certain things I did and didn't do, uh, you know. And then when I had children, I, I literally started drinking spring water, you know, over 30 years ago. And, and uh, I stopped drinking faucet water almost over 40 years ago, mm -hmm. right? So there were a lot of things that, that I changed uh, in my diet. So this approach was a lot different because um, I, I probably maybe, I don't know, maybe about 10 years ago, I started where I only eat one time a day. Oh my. Yeah. You know, so I would, you know, but, you know, but I would in the morning still have my smoothie or uh, hot water and all that or whatever. Uh, mid morning actually and then you know I'd have my my one meal between two and six you know and I'm good at night I might have some popcorn and wine mm. you know that's my dinner or pistachio nuts <laughs> you know so when I started realizing that to regenerate the hips you have to add more omega-3 Okay. You know, and so I started studying how that affects the joints, you know, what that looks like. And I was like, this is really, I mean, we have to really get this information to women because for one, if we're holding all of our emotional health uh, or pain in our hips, and two, we're sitting all the time. And three, many of us are single, so we're not, what, thrusting. Uh-huh. You get that? Mm -hmm. We're not thrusting. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 
what the heck? You know, so naturally that's going to cause all of those right there. And if you're, and if you're not knowing about nutrition, which is why I love brother Samir, right? <laughs> you know, he gonna, he gonna make sure you have the information. He you said it might be different, right? Mm -hmm. But the information is out there. But unfortunately, many of us would rather relegate our healing to someone else. Mm -mm. And I, I was talking to a client the other day. I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, you hear people say all the time, health is wealth, right? I said, yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, well, do, do you take your bank account and tell somebody else to, to work it out for you? <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> right. I said, well, why don't you do that? Why wouldn't you give your bank account to somebody else to take care of it? He said, first of all, they might take it. They right. might use it for something they want. They might not do right by me. Right. I said, but yet and still, you would go to a doctor who you probably have not, this person hasn't known you for the last 20, 30 years. They don't love you. They don't care. They don't love you. you. They right. don't care about you. Yep. Matter of fact, they have to look at their folder to remember your name. Yep. In front. yep. And if they have the wrong folder, they identifying you with somebody else and not even yourself. And they don't even know it. There's a nurse uh, that's about to go on trial now because she accidentally gave this 75 year old woman the wrong stuff and the woman died. So okay. you know, yeah, you letting somebody else take over your health that mm -mm, nope. Yeah. So you let, and, and that's what I was telling people. I said that, so, so that, that was my whole thing about this whole thing when people were talking about getting that jab. I'm like, first of all, your immune system was designed by the creator of the universe who holds all those planets up in the air you on a ball dangling from something. It ain't failed yet. Say it again. That, that, that that we have not failed. Fail. We have not fallen anywhere. That's There's right. a system holding it in place. You don't think that same system is in your body holding it in place? That's right. They put all that foreign stuff in there to alter what the body does. They, they and that's care. what's going to happen because it's part of a process to what? Eliminate you. Yep. That's why there was this push. You got to do African-Americans first. You got to do black people first. Yep. Mm -hmm. And people were signing up for it. Even the most brilliant of minds that I knew was signing up to get eliminated. It's a whole population control issue because, you know, they say between 2030 and 2040, um, those who are now considered the majority will be in the minority. And they're not going to let that happen. They're not going to, oh, they're trying not to make they it They're trying happen. not to let that happen. Because right now, they realize that they have made a mistake not including us. Right. Okay. And they made a mistake. And we, too, have made a mistake by allowing ourselves to be divided by color. Because and, and everything in the universe is colorful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's the rainbow there. Every plant you see is not just green. You got all variations of colors and plants. You know? Yep. That's a that's a different conversation. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so many people give their health to someone else to deal with when actually there's so much literature to let you know what the spiritual message is that your body is trying to tell you. So that you can stop and listen. I told me I, I, I quit taking aspirins many years ago, many years ago. I mean, many years ago. I, I never did give my children uh, medicine. It was kind of like the one time I gave my daughter after she had went to, um, she had went to uh, nursery school. She was about two, two and a half and she had an earache and, and they gave her moxicillin. And you know, okay, I give it to it. And then I go and after the fact, after giving it to her for a day or two, I go and read that moxicillin takes the enamel off your teeth. Oh, dang. Jesus. Oh, they hold on. You know, so you you have to find different in in the the mothers, the grandmother's solutions, the, the grandmother's remedies, all those still work. Mm-hmm. They still work. 
And all we have to do is, is, is use them, study them, the book Back to Eden. I, I now have it downloaded on my iPad. You can go and look at all of the different herbs and, and spices and everything that, that the body can use to recover itself. So anyway, continuing with recovering this hip, hip injury, I started looking at the whole thrusting conversation. And uh, so of course I talked to my, you know, my BFF trainer, Shalanda, mm -hmm. and I'm like, you know, this whole thrusting thing is really important for single women because people try to uh, shame you into not having a man and this and this and this. And so we actually uh, uh, attempt to be strong inside of that. You know, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. And literally many of us are good, but you still have to add the thrusting element so that your hips can release that trauma, whatever trauma it was. And, and I don't care how small it is, people. It, you, you don't want to compare. There's no, you don't have to have the trauma that I experienced. That, oh, I didn't have that much trauma. I don't care what it was. One little thing, your, your teddy bear got stolen uh, or your sister took something, all of those are trauma, you know, or if you feel stuck because of your age or you, all of that has to be worked out. So the physical side of that is adding thrusting. And so Shalanda goes, well, Moo, you have your ball, right? And I said, yeah. She said, hump your ball. <laughs> <laughs> she said, hump your exercise ball. I said, look, I said, yeah, right. Uh-huh. You know, so, you know, do your stretching. And I'm going to tell y'all, you cannot not exercise. You can you, you walk a little bit if you got to walk in the house. I love how Akua all said it's like, Sweat with me for five minutes. Whatever it takes, you know, use your body because the body loves to move. It is not the sedentary life that we've been trained is not healthy for us. And especially for, for us who are melanated because we're used to being in the sun and getting nourished and healed from the sun. But most of the time we are indoors and sitting. So you want to thrust, you can use your ball, you can use your hula hoop, you can use your dildo, can I say that on here? Mm -hmm. You know, okay. or whatever, <laughs> you know, but, you know, dance, shake your hips, twerk. Yep, yep. You know, you can laugh, you can laugh about twerking all you want to. But after 60, if you don't know how to regenerate your body, then you end up you know, being inside of a conversation of, you know, just actually falling apart. I do a lot of dancing while I cook at night. <laughs> mm -hmm. And while since I'm here cooking? by myself, yeah, while yeah. I'm cooking, I'll be dancing around with the spatula and the spoon. And so yeah. since I'm in there by myself, I can twerk and do whatever I want to do. <laughs> That's right. Have your own. Now I'm telling you what I did do the other day because I like to dance too. And I don't mind dancing with the shades open. But when I got ready to hump on the the, the uh, ball, I make sure I close my my. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, that's funny. I say they'd be like, she done lost her rabbit mind. <laughs> Man, I found these um stretching exercises. I'm actually putting together a sensual stretch class. Yeah. These Ooh. stretching exercise. Yeah, these stretching exercises. And it actually does incorporate that. So as you've been talking about, I'm like, okay, so I'm definitely this is my confirmation that my, yes. my class is on the right track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I've been doing a lot more Tai Chi and Qigong. Uh, that has been wonderful. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and what I do notice is, you know, I'm, I haven't been able to get back up to my 10,000. I've gotten, the most I've gotten is to 3,000 without um, feeling pain. But it's not just the walking or the, or the, but I have a tendency, if I see something, I got to pick it up. And, you know, you lift things with your hip. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so it's like, you can't, this, your suitcase, you know me, I'm traveling, you know? <laughs> yep, 
yeah. So I have to have conversations about that. And, you know, but all of that work through is inside of the process of listening to my journey, like really going and, and oh, so much to the point this evening on my podcast, I'm talking to uh, one of my high school buddies because uh, in our senior year in high school, we were at a football game and he was running the ball. Luther was running the ball. Luther, badass athlete too, right? Luther, Luther was running the ball. And I'm screaming, Luther! And I run up to the top bleacher because I'm around with him, right? Go, Luther, go! Boom! He oh. got hit and the bleacher broke. Oh, no. Girl, they had two ambulances. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, God, that ain't funny, but that's kind of funny. Can you see the, can you see the, the lifetime story right there, right? Oh, goodness. So, so I was talking to my son because all of this healing, uh, you know, like what's stored in my hip? What did I need to release? I've been going deep, you know, you know, going deep. Because if you're living too fast, that means you're not processing all of the events that have led up to who you are. You see, that's what that going too fast looks like. So uh, my, I'm telling my son about the story and he's like, well, have you, have you ever talked to Luther since high school? I said, well, we're Facebook friends. He said, y'all Facebook friends? No, I said, yeah. He said, have you all ever talked about that? I said, no, we have never talked about it. <laughs> you know, and because when we were in the hospital, we were on the phone with each other. Oh, uh, y'all was both in the hospital. Baby, I was in the hospital for three months. He broke his neck. What? They tackled, when they tackled him, they broke his neck. I'm going to find out tonight with really with the real dilly dilly. But he actually ended up getting out of the hospital before I did. Wow. With a broken neck? I didn't know you could yeah. break your neck. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and so I can't, and so, I, so after my son said that, I said to him, I said, hey, would you be interested in talking to me about what happened in 1975? He was like, yeah. <laughs> so then, Xavier, Dr. Dr. X, I go and get the books. You know what I went and got, right? I went and got the Destiny card books. Oh. And I opened it up to see what was going on with my person at the age of 17 that this experience would come into existence. So I'm going to talk about that tonight on the show with him, because I thought that, man, this is really, I'm so grateful that I could see what that looked like for me and, and, and process it at those, at this, at the spiritual level. Mm -hmm. I'm you see that? Tune in if I can, I'm about to. Uh, yeah, well, you know, we're recording. You, you, you can always do the recording with it. But I just thought that that was so, um, yeah, I, I guess it excited me, first of all, that I was connected to Luther and how easy it was to say, hey, can you talk? And then how quickly we could get it together. Because I believe this is all inside of me continuing, continuing to uh, regenerate my hip and release that. Mm. Release that trauma. Because that, you know, although that happened to my right leg, I don't have any issues with my right leg. Hmm. Yeah. And I mean, when I tell you I broke my hip, thigh, and knee, and they had to keep me in traction for three months Good where month. I laid on a bed and somebody had to use a bedpan a few times a day so I can pee and, and pass my bowels. And they had to wipe my ass. Three months. And they had to wash me. That, oh man. Yeah. I can't Talk imagine about, three months of just being bedridden like that. that being bedridden. So you know that made me fiercely independent and fiercely committed to my health and well-being because I never wanted to experience that again. I know you didn't. Mm -mm. I never wanted to experience that again. And now to have this whole experience with the hip injury, I can see that 
you know, the, the importance, because sometimes, again, that living too fast, not processing that information to see how it overlays, right? So the whole process is about opening to receive. Yeah, because growing up, I, I wasn't given anything, so I had to work for it. I had to do everything myself. So all the life was about doing it myself, doing it myself. And I had that one experience of naming that bed where I couldn't do it myself. But then after that, I became even fiercely more independent. And now here I am and the universe says, yeah, but you got to receive. Mm -hmm. You have to allow life to give to you. You have to allow other people to give to you. You have to, I mean, I, I've been practicing asking for help, which is not something that I do. Oh, ever. you're neither. I don't ask, you know, so I've been doing experiments, asking people, hey, would you do this for me? And I'm surprised that at the ones, the people that I think are going to say yes, don't. Oh. <laughs> okay. No, 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 you know, and the people that, you know, you know, and then I got the list of the probables and they, they say yes right away. I'd be like, mm -hmm. yeah. Ain't that interesting? It is so interesting yes it is very interesting because i'm like that too i don't i don't really like to ask for help if i ask somebody to help me with something it's because it's i've exhausted every option that i have of doing hello self yeah you know? and uh sometimes you are surprised because people that you think would either because they know your situation some yeah. people that you think would probably just step in there and be like okay well i know that you need this or i know this is going on and i can do xyz and sometimes those are the people that don't say a word. They just sit and watch. But, you yeah. know, there's a lesson in that, too. There's a lesson. And I and, and, and it's like, I get it. And it's like, I, I, I don't hold that against the people. It just, it just, you know, it just gives me information about what kind of relationship we have. That's it. Right. The, what did they say? When people show you who they are, believe them? Yeah. And, and, yeah. And, but it was so interesting for me because I was like, you know, and, and I remember telling one of my business partners, I said, yeah, I don't borrow money from anybody. I don't, you know, it's like, mm -mm, I'm going to go without before I go, you know, and, and then after I said that, the universe is like, yeah, well, we got to test that because that you're making that more than what it is. Mm. And so I, I said, okay, well, then, you know, I asked some people to borrow some money and I was surprised. Some people like, boom, boom, boom. They had never asked them. They boom, here, here, what's your check? And then people that I thought would be in my corner were like, mm, ignored me or I'll get back to you. Never did. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was a lesson. And then the universe said, yeah, you have to open your pipelines because people have to see a way to give to you. You, 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 you're just so standalone. And I was like boohooing again because I can see it so clearly. I can see how I send out, I don't need you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> can you see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was like, wow. And I swear, I be swearing I'm the most vulnerable person on the planet. I, I, I think that about myself as well. Mm -hmm. but, you know, the image that I give off is that I'm extremely independent and standalone. <laughs> and yeah. I'm like, well, you know, in theory. <laughs> in theory. <laughs> and it's like, but we're not put here, you know, to be alone. We're, 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 we're just not. We're not put here to do it ourselves. Right, right. You know, so we're going to continue to meet people that, you know, tap into that part of ourselves that that's still immature. You know, that's that's one area of immaturity. But because it's so fragile, you 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 tend to want to meet people that can handle the fragility of it, right? You don't want somebody to, to be abusive because that's been my experience. 
you know, my, my innocence has been abused. And it's like, I'd rather be by myself. <laughs> right, right, right. I don't want you to tear me up because I'm, I, I got a, a soft heart, you know? <laughs> you know? And, and, and that's and how we feel in love relationships. You know, you, you want to be vulnerable and be open to love, <laughs> yeah. but you know, you also don't want to get toe up either. Well, and that, and that, that goes back to what I, I talked about before, you know, because part of love is being willing to embrace the pain. Mm. I mean, it's almost like in life, you know, people want to live, but they don't want to die. And it's all the experience is so not to put so much value on it, not to put so much pressure on it, you know, to have people not leave you. Don't you leave me. Don't you hurt me. Don't you cheat on me. Don't, all of those are such extreme energy fields that you create that happening. So there, there's never any freedom to love in a relationship where you insist that the person doesn't hurt you, doesn't, doesn't cheat, doesn't leave you. You have more energy on that than actually being present to the love. Yeah. And so then you have to get past making that the priority. You, but you have to get past that in yourself before you can create the relationship. Mm-hmm. That's what the opening to love is. You have to open you this this work it is about how how deeply do you love you? So deep that you know no matter what somebody else does to you, you're okay. There's they can leave, they can go, they can cheat, they can do whatever they want to. I'm still good. Yep, that's the key right there. Yeah, it has, and their, their experience has nothing to do with me. I can learn what I need to learn, but I don't have to crush them, curse them out, uh, defile them in any way because of what happened. This was my, this was my experience to get something from. And, that and then you use that to make room for what's next though, Xavier. You use that to make room for what's next, not to shut your heart down. Right. I get that in, in theory. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, uh, I, I understand. I, I definitely understand, you know, the learning of the lessons and recognizing that you have lessons to learn and recognizing that if you don't learn them, you will repeat them. I also, you know, for me, and I'm just speaking for me, you know, I was a person that didn't experience heartbreak in my younger years. I mean, you know, my husband passed. That was a whole different experience. That wasn't, to me, that wasn't heartbreak. That was complete and utter life-changing and devastating. That's a whole different thing. Though I guess heartbreak can be similar to that, but um, the whole heartbreak thing, because it came so late in life for me in my 40s the first time and my 50s the second time, I don't know that I um, developed that because, you know, as I hear you talk about heartbreak and I hear other people talk about it, it's like, yeah, well, in my 20s, this happened, you know, and a couple of times in my 20s and in my 30s and stuff. And it's like you develop um, a tolerance almost where you know how to deal with it. But when it has not happened much and it's later in life, you kind of don't want to send your 58 year old person through that you just don't well suppose you're not sending your 58 year old person through anything right suppose that what happens is that uh, and, and again that's like being stuck you see that mm -hmm. that's like a stuckness right because it almost like eliminates the possibility of you falling, allowing yourself, not fall, because it ain't no fall, allowing yourself to be present to being loved or even loving. So suppose you can actually take on that you're safe, no matter what, and, and allow that, yourself, go that, ahead. That's, that's the part that, for, for me, that's the part of healing. Like, you know, the experience yeah. doesn't hurt anymore. I'm not even connected to the experience. As yeah. I look at moving forward, I'm like, okay, did I learn enough 
And when I listen to you talk to me, and you know, I, I listen to you talk to me all the time. When I listen to you talk to me, I hear in order for you to love, you have to love yourself enough to understand that whether they stay or go, you're good. But that also means that you could experience this as well, but you're still good in the love. But in order for me, if I experience that, I still have to go through healing from that. Even though I know I'm good, I know I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna still be Xavier. I'm gonna still do what I do because I did what I did through both of those heartbreaks. So I know I'm still gonna be who I am. You know what I'm saying? But it's just the actual pain and emotional stuff that you feel while you dealing with it I didn't like that part and I tend to shy away from stuff I don't like <laughs> yeah you you know that's so interesting right because because as women we have been taught about that on the real side I mean childbirth is one of the most painful aspects of bringing a child into this world yes it is how many children do you have Two. Two. But when you didn't say, oh, I can't have another baby because it was too painful. I remember that pain. It was painful. Was your childbirth painful? Yes, it was. And I did say that. And I waited eight years. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but here's the thing. Yeah. But here's the thing. There is something about what you equated to that birth was not the pain. What you created to that birth was the joy of that being. That's true. Yeah. You equated, oh, what, so because you've been stuck on, uh, I might get hurt. That's what you're equating with relationships. You're not equating love with, so one of the, one of the things that you can go back and do, and, you know, sometimes I, I do this when I'm working with people who are in the throes of heartbreak, like, you know, you know how it feels to be so broken up. You can hardly talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, who was this person for you? What did you really get from them being in your life? And having them journal that, like write it down, like just write it down. Now, because sometimes, you know, we, we put so much emphasis on the person breaking our heart that we forget about the great part that we experience being with them. And, and if you focus on what it was like being with them, eventually that fear of being hurt, it dissipates because you're not focusing the same way that you waited eight years to have a child because over time you, you quit worrying about the pain. I remember thinking when I was going through that whole hip, thigh, knee situation, I'm like, I, if, if having children is this painful, I ain't having no, and I had three. Mm, mm -hmm. Last one, I was almost 40, had him at home with midwives. Oh, Lord, Jesus. Come on. Okay, that's that Saturn shit. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and he is such a joy. He is really, sometimes he comes over here and stay two or three days, and we just, we just have a good time together. I just, just, just love his presence. And your your kids are so blessed to have you as a mother. That would just be know. so great. Just so you know, they don't think so. Okay, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> My children might tell somebody else that, but when they're talking to me, they trying to run the show and hanging up on me and shit. I'm like, God, can I get, can I be mama today? <laughs> Man, that would just be so great to have the type of conversations that you have, you know, because that's something I didn't have. I didn't really have conversations. Um, I had a dictatorship thing going on. So conversations yeah. were, were scarce around the house. But that would be so great where you actually are in touch with their spirits and who they are and nurturing them to become the best of themselves and not who you see them as being. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really, um, I feel blessed because in, in many ways, I feel like I gave birth to, for my first two, my mother and my father, because they saved my life. Mm. They literally gave me uh, a reason to live. 
until I could catch up with myself because I, I and I, you know, the last time I, I, I tried to commit suicide, I was 30 years old. And I remember writing a, a suicide letter saying, I'm taking my children with me because nobody is here to love them the way that I do. Oh, man. Yeah, thank God I didn't go through with that, right. But anyway, you know, I, I created the, the course, the Tao of Parenting, based on the fact that our children are our master teachers. They came here to remind us of who we are. Mm. And I started off with Khalil Gibran's poem, you know, your children are not your own. Mm -hmm. They come through you, but they don't belong to you. Mm -hmm. And I was able to raise my children in that capacity because I didn't grow up with a mother and father. I didn't grow up with, with parents checking on me, telling me what to do. I, I had so much freedom and I wanted to raise my children with a certain amount of freedom, but I also wanted them to uh, be disciplined and I wanted them to know love. You know, I wanted them to know love and I wanted to nurture them. So I applied those things that I didn't have, but I also included the freedom in that so that they were free to be themselves. You know, you know, and sometimes I'd be like, ah, dog, why did I do that? Because they just don't, they, they got their own mind too much. You know? They sure do. I gave my kids freedom because I didn't have it at all. Right. And I gave them freedom to speak their minds. And sometimes yeah. I'm like, you know, I should have popped you in your mouth before. <laughs> because <laughs> you a little like, too free with that mouth <laughs> Girl, I mean like God, God. And, and on one hand I love it on the other hand it's like yep. oh, I could never say how much you say to me to anybody right. you know you know if they were 10 years if they were 5 years older than me they were like respect your elders <laughs> <laughs> my sister was a year and six months older than me and she was like the big sister and I'm like we almost the same age nigga. <laughs> right <laughs> a year and a half yeah y'all the same age <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but no she was a big sister you know and my family emphasized that baby you can't do what she does you know like oh, okay you know but you know inside of the work of this plan to heal, we really have to take on the conversation of longevity. The con you know, I have always said, I have always said that when I die, I want to be in motion on the dance floor, making love, swimming in the lake, jumping off some, some you know, diving board, you know, in action. Yes. Not laid up because I can't move. Exactly. Exactly. You know, and so in order to do that, you know, this whole process of me slowing down to reprocess my life, to move into a place where I can regenerate and really take on. I mean, I, I've been reading this book lately and um, I said I was going to write a course from it. Uh, it's called Breaking the Habit of Death. Have I told you about that? Mm -mm. Girl, it's such a beautiful <clears throat> book. And what's so wonderful about it is a lot of the things he talk about, a lot of the elements we do teach in Master Force. Okay. He just goes at it in a deeper, it's like the advanced, advanced, you know? And I was, when, when, the, when that book came to me, um, I was do, I was doing a healing treatment, and the guy that was giving me this laser treatment, he said, "Oh yeah, this brother taught me such and such a thing." He wrote a book called "Breaking the Death Habit," you know, and he told it, and that's what he said. So when he finished the treatment, the next day I went and googled it, and I said, "This been out there? Mm -hmm. and I don't know." <laughs> <laughs> and so he goes in depth about. Uh, the, the, that there are people on this planet right now who are 200, 300 years old, you know, and what that looks like Ooh. and, and how that, how that relates to, you know, people talk about foods and sometimes food is the biggest culprit. Being addicted to eating is the biggest culprit. Yep. Learning how to breathe and drink water for your nutrition is the best thing that you can do. 
learning how to breathe because we breathe horribly. I have a book on, it's called Breathe. And um, the things that I learned reading that book and the way that I was breathing, I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I hope you learned that first in our course because that's the first well, thing. I did, I did. Right. But then when I had that whole- You have to go I, deeper because we it. only teach uh, introductory level right. because right. when I'm working with my, when I'm working with my mentor, uh, this, this whole thing with my hip was my breath. Oh no, Mooch, you got to do fire breath. You got to do, I want you to do 2,000 breaths. 2,000 mm -hmm. breaths, yep. Mm -hmm. Fire breaths, 2,000 fire. I can't get to 60. <laughs> we got, um, I learned exercises, the actual yeah. exercises that I did in the gym with weights to help me with my breathing. Yes. You know, so that your, yeah. your breath actually helps to heal. And but the Tai Chi works on that too. It's so wonderful because I'm telling you, Xavier, and I'm glad you're saying that because there's so many things out there that we can use to help ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's funny because you mentioned Samir earlier and he, he has been telling me to get on my Tai Chi and I just yeah. have not done that yet, but I guess I will now soon. Yeah, because literally on... Um, there's YouTube channels that have some brilliant, yep. you know, brilliant that's where channels. I, that's where I have looked it up. I just yeah. haven't taken the time to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And I was really, when I was able to, you know, start walking and exercising again, I was really surprised how much Tai Chi opened up my energy. I was like, damn, I should have been doing more of this because I used to do it a little bit. You know what I mean? But it's just such a beautiful rhythmic experience. And so even when I'm dancing, I'm doing Tai Chi. You know, I'm doing that. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> it feels so good. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it feels so wonderful. And you know, because my, you know, I was telling my my mentor, I said, yeah, you know, I can't do the yoga moves the way I'm used to because. I still, you know, you know, the whole thing about pain, once you felt that pain, mm -hmm. you're scared of feeling that pain again. Yep. So you don't, you don't go to the length that you used to. Yeah. And so he was like, well, do more Tai Chi for now and then go back to your yoga. And sure enough, you know, I was able to open that up a little more and get a little bit more, get a little bit stronger with my yoga poses. So, you know, yeah, I, I just really love the whole process, we have to take on that level of responsibility. It's up to us to heal. That's why the, the Bible, you know, and I'm sure they have it in other spiritual documents, you know, heal thyself position. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Doesn't say go to the doctor. Nope. And the example that, that, that we use about Jesus laying hands on people, he tell people, oh, no, that was you. You, you just touched my God. Your belief is what yep. heals you. Your belief, yep. And we keep thinking somebody, and doctors are not trained to heal. We have literally created their entire lifestyle off of our consumption. Yep, yep, yep. I say that all the time. We the eat their, their bad yeah. food, yep. we eat them flaming hot, we eat all that garbage. And then, and I, I do have this experience. I remember me and Leela, Leela and I used to love, um, when we were living down in Hyde Park together, we used to love going over to Walgreens every now and then and getting us, getting us some uh, Twizzlers. Okay. <laughs> right, but we bought an off brand, right? The Red Vines or whatever. And one time I was eating the Twizzlers and I said, hmm, I said, my hip is bothering me. Hmm. And she said, well, because we walk to the store? I said, no, you know, we walk a thousand miles every day. <laughs> I said, I think it's from eating these Twizzlers. Mm. Now, you know, that red dye ain't no joke. Oh yeah, that red and that yellow, yep. Mm -hmm. That red, that yellow, that blue. Mm -hmm. And I, so I couldn't eat them then. I couldn't eat eating them at that moment, that, in that moment. And then I, I think the next day I did a water fast and some lemon and, you know, and then I tried it again. And sure enough, my hip started. I said, what are they putting in this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. 
And you have red dye in everything almost. It's some red and, dye in a lot, especially the fat, you know, the chips and all of that kind of stuff. You got a lot of, it, especially candies, of course, and cereals. Oh, yeah. So we have to really do a much better job, a much better job in our area of nutrition. Mm -hmm. We have to do a much better job in our area of being addicted to taste. Yes. We have got to stop eating like children. Yep. I think it's okay. says that, that we're addicted to taste. Yeah. Taste. Uh, like children. Oh, I can't have that. It don't taste. No, some, anything good for you is going to be bitter. Bitter is one of all, mostly all medicine is bitter, but because we couldn't stand it, now they put high fructose corn syrup in everything. And that's and horrible. That's the for worst you. thing in the world. Yeah. 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 They yeah. discovered that accidentally in a lab in 1971. Hmm. And then started putting it and don't tell anybody. That's how they do. Don't tell anybody, but we can do this and this and this. And then they hide the data that says this causes a breakdown to the body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I read so high fructose corn syrup many years ago. Yeah. I stopped that and the hydrogenated oils or partially hydrogenated oils. Yeah. Under that and the system. MSG. Yeah. I stopped doing that. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I actually, when my children were little, took out the white product. So it was no flour, I no sugar, yeah. no salt. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. and, and MSG, none of that. And people use it. I mean, people say, oh, well, I can use accent. I said, that's, and look, it says monosodic. This is it, <laughs> <laughs> just a flavor enhancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, it cuts your, cut your arteries up. Make sure, you, right. You know, your blood can't operate properly. That's horrible. You know? And the body is so proficient, though, because it's going to compensate for that, but it can only compensate for so long. Because mm -hmm. your body knows how to heal itself as long as it you does. keep it healthy. Yeah. It knows how to heal itself. Mm -hmm. And that's what they say cancer is. They say cancer is where something defective had gotten to your body and the body said, let's, let's put a shield around this so it doesn't go anyplace else. And those people go in your body and cut it open. And where does it go? Oh, it's metastasized. Mom, you, you, yeah. you did it. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. so if you cut something open, it's going to spread. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Baking soda and water, get your body alkaline. One teaspoon, and I'm not a doctor. I'm not saying I'm a doctor, but what I do when my body seems to be too much alkaline is I'll get a cup of water. I'll put a half a teaspoon of baking soda in there, stir it until it's clear. And then I'll drink that down. And then I belch. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but that, you know, people say, oh, what can I do? Baking soda. And somebody was telling me the other day, do you recommend baking soda and coconut oil for everything? I said, well, just about. <laughs> the universe is very generous with us anything that's been challenging on this planet there is a cure mm -hmm. the whole bach flower remedy was based on flowers being in somebody's garden that was able to be broken down for healing uh, elements yeah, you yeah. and Samir. So one of y'all, I think Samir is the one that's into the liquid bentonite and you're the one into the, the diatomaceous earth. I take both of them. I figure I got to cut. Yeah. <laughs> I do diatomaceous earth, baking soda, coconut oil. Listen, all of it. I told somebody, <laughs> just really trust God. <laughs> trust the universe. Yep, yep, yep. You know, I don't even like saying God because the, the the backward spelling of God is dog. They were playing, they joking with us. Well, I don't use it be simply because I don't necessarily believe in the Christian belief of God. No. Right. Use God, it's automatically associated with that because that's just, you know, the prominent 
uh, understanding in mm -hmm. America, you know. So I don't use it only only because of that. I have, you know, many friends who say God and I just be quiet because, you know, everybody's entitled to believe what they want to believe. It's your journey. Everybody can believe what they want to believe. Right. right. It doesn't hurt me at all. I just don't necessarily say the word. I use universe or life, yep. universe, you know, things like that. So it's it's bigger than one religion's understanding. Well, it's of all of it. And that's what I like too about universe. When I started you using that, it was because Una meant one verse. And it's like one verse, one song. Mm -hmm. And that one song is what? Love. Because every single re religion, one of the things that they vibrate on is love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what we can all see. That's why I couldn't understand why, why we have to be in such dis disagreement when love is what every religion is talking about. Because judgment comes in and there are judgment. some who feel that your humanity is not really there to let go of your ego. Exactly. Yes, the ego, it, it comes into the situation. So yeah. we're getting close to the end of this has been a really great discussion. Oh my goodness. Isn't I, it? Oh. Yep. Yep, mm -hmm. that time just went right on by. So what would you like to wrap up your segment with? Well, I want to wrap up my segment with letting people know that I have two courses rolling out right now. One is the life course. It's a 12-week course, and it teaches you about breathing. It teaches you about the MARV technique. It teaches you about uh, the, the life quadrant that I just went through teaches about a whole lot of things, but in 12 weeks, you can actually get clear about your life purpose and balancing your energy. So, um, that course is starting on, I think, April 16th, I think, and, um, you can find, um, you can find it online on my master force page or on Masterforce, or you can just email me at mushamsuit at gmail.com. And then also we have a life coach certification course coming up. And you know what? This will probably be one of the last course this spring and maybe fall that I'll teach because I will be 65 in January and I am looking to retire. Wow. Wow. So I'm doing my best to uh, empower the coaches to continue this work or my children or somebody because, you know, I think I'm going to do something different. I don't even know what that is, but I'm letting the universe know that <laughs> this gift has been out there now for 35 years. You know, That's you look nowhere near 60. I would never, even, there's no way anybody ever would think you were 60, anything. Yeah, well, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I have uh, given honor to the universe for this body that, you know, I haven't been the best taken care of, but boy, am I learning and I am willing to grow into change. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of healing. Some things, if you stop or start doing differently, your body will heal almost instantly. You, you get, oh yes, it's different within a day or two. There's a difference. And people yes. don't even realize that it's just like with smokers. If you stop smoking for a day, you there's a change. Yeah. The, the longer you stop, the more change there is. But a day, there's a change. And yeah. um, a lot of when I learned that every organ in your body regenerates in, in less than a year, like the stomach was what, six weeks? You know, it's like every organ regenerates. So what causes it to suffer is your thinking and your nutrition. So those are two things that you have the power to train, your thinking and your, nutri your nutrition. Yep. So when the doctor tell you, oh yeah, this is fatal, that's bull crap. It's not. So, you know. Hey, Nicole, I know I'm getting off. I'm, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to next month and thank you, Dr. Fox. And when thank is, you, when is your next show? What's the date of your next show? Oh my God. I I actually know this. Do I know this? I don't think I know this. Because <laughs> I remember so funny because I tell you guys all the time. And Listen, and every show. time, every time I swear to you, I go and be like, oh yeah, I know she's gonna ask me this. So I gotta go and find it. And you know, before she okay, so it's May 5th. It's it's the Thursday before Mother's Day. And I will be talking to you from Jamaica. Ooh, I'm so jealous. No, no. <laughs> Beautiful weather. Oh my gosh, I need to be there with you. 
Well, you know, I, you know, every, I got to get my sunshine in. It really, I, I can't tell people enough. Please do yourself a favor and go get you some sun and water. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yep. So I'll be May 5th and I'll be talking to you. Oh, that's Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> Cinco okay. de Mayo. Give me some rum punch in my hand, tuck into your mom from the beaches. Well, I will be looking forward to it. And I hope that there's some warm weather here on that day too. So thank you so much for another great show. And we will look forward to next month's show. Um, okay. And you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You guys have a, a, a rest of the great show too. And I'll be talking <laughs> to you. Okay.